Hello and welcome to another financial analysis video with myself, Moe Damin and uh, Ted Wayman. So today we're going to be looking at Howden's Joinery Group. Now, the, uh, the, the purpose for the show is this is an education platform to help you improve your financial acumen. So if you want to get better at business, then you've got to understand the language of business, which is finance. And we help you by analyzing the financial statements of famous, well-known businesses from all around the world. So today, like I said, we're looking at Howden's Joinery Group. Now, a bit of, a bit of background about Howden's Joinery Group. They're essentially a, um, well, there, there are kitchens, uh, they provide kind of kitchens and joinery products uh, to the trade. So what I mean by the trade is, uh, you know, construction workers. So they don't necessarily sell this directly to consumers, but they do sell this to construction workers and businesses, etc., who then fit these things in for you and I in our homes. And by joinery, we're talking about things like uh, doors, flooring, etc. Now, uh, this is a UK-based business, uh, and uh, they're also a FTSE 250 business. So essentially, they are, by, in terms of market capitalization, uh, the top, the biggest 250 companies on the FTSE exchange. Um, we're going to be looking at the uh, share price of the business, but before I do so, this company is a request from two of our uh, viewers uh, and stick around towards the end because I will show you how you can make a request for a company that you're interested in that you would like us to analyze for you. So, so Dread Pirate and Charlie, here, are your, here is your video. There's a bit of context that they've both included in there, which Ted will include in his analysis and reference to. Um, we're going to look at the share price as well. We're not giving financial advice here, but it's always interesting to look at the share price and to look at how that kind of connects with the financial statement and the history of the business and the potential future for the company as well. So if you invested back in 1993 when they uh, floated, you'd be sitting on an increase of 359%. Uh, certainly not the highest that we've seen, but it's not bad either. If you invested five years ago, you'd be sitting on an increase of 35%. And if you invested a year ago, you'd be sitting on a decrease of 33%. So definitely some changes happening in the last one to five years. So stick around towards the end. We're going to look at that in more detail. So without further ado, over to Ted uh, to run through the financial statement and, and kind of almost teach you and show you how to analyze the financial statement of a company like this or any similar company in that industry as well. Excellent. Thank you very much, Marie. Good to see you. Um, welcome back to all of our subscribers. Welcome to our viewers. If you are a new viewer, then obviously please do um, like, share and subscribe. Um, welcome to uh, the Dread Pirate Buffett, who I assume is named uh, similarly to the Dread Pirate Roberts, that famous pirate from uh, Princess Bride, I think it was. And, and obviously that was then passed down through uh, each uh, subsequent um, pirate. Anyway, we're not going to get stuck into um, Dread Pirate Roberts and, and so on and so forth. Here are uh, Howden's um, uh, annual report and accounts. You'll notice it's for 2021. So this will be the year ended December 2021. We're recording this in November 2022. So quite out of date and the new accounts will be out quite soon. Um, uh, and if any of our viewers can tell us, um, Moed and I were trying to work out why why these guys have a chicken um, as their logo. So if you know the answers to why they have a chicken as their logo, please, please do tell us. So Moe gave you a little bit of background as to who these guys are and what they do. Uh, and, and here's a little sort of outline as to, you know, who they are. They're, it's a kitchen supplier. So, you know, it's the uh, the cabinets and the, and, the, and, the, and the handles and the kind of, you know, all those kind of, you know, have those soft um, a, a closure in your kitchens, all very exciting. Um, so these guys supply it to the trade, to Magnet and these kind of guys at Wix. Um, and then Wix will then sell it to you. So um, lots of information about who these guys are and what they do, um, but we are going to whiz um, uh, through that and, and we're going to get down to the kind of the key numbers. So here we go. Um, uh, here are the numbers. So we're down on page 176 of their accounts, looking at their consolidated income statement. We are in millions of pounds. So you can see here that their turnover um, uh, is just over 2,000 million. That's basically just over 2 billion pounds. That's a lot. 
okay so these guys you know i mean that is a that's a phenomenal amount so two billion pounds of turnover uh significantly up 35 percent increase on the previous year uh, when it was 1.5 billion cost of sales i think is really interesting um is actually pretty low so these guys you know they're making that you know their gross margin is 60 percent. so every time they sell a i don't know a uh you know a bit of a bit of wood um, you know, joinery, when they sell a bit of wood um, to uh, Magnet, uh, it costs them, if they sell the piece of wood for, for a pound, it only costs them 40p. Now you think Magnet are then going to make a further profit by selling it to you. So actually, you know, you're paying quite a lot for your kitchen. The actual physical cost of that kitchen is really, really low. So these guys are, are very, very profitable, um, which I have to admit is, is you know, uh, you know, eye, eye opening, I have to admit, I, I had no idea. I thought they'd be at a slightly lower margin. They've got some overheads. You'll notice that the selling and distribution, there'll be a lot of distribution costs in there. So, you know, getting it onto trucks and so shipping it around and shipping it onto, onto boats and all that kind of stuff. And then the admin expenses will be things like, you know, the HR team and the finance team and facilities and IT and all that kind of back office stuff um, uh, that we've got. Um, but still the operating profit, 400 million pounds is uh it's a 19 percent um operating margin so for every pound they sell they get to keep 20p um there's a little bit of finance costs but you know really nothing to speak about which means that we're probably not going to find any debt on their balance sheet um and because they're profitable they are paying their taxes which is good uh, and therefore they end up with a profit of about 314 uh, 315 million pounds on turnover of just over 2 billion which is a 15 percent net margin 15%, I think a lot of companies out there would be very jealous of a 15% net margin. So that is really, really high. Uh, certainly in my book, I'm surprised that they can operate at such a high margin. Uh, and maybe if you work for Magnet, you probably want to get your negotiation boots on because it looks like you're paying quite a lot uh, for what they are supplying. Um, but maybe there's nobody else out there who can supply it, in which case, if you're a budding entrepreneur uh, and you're thinking, I'll have a bit of that, then this is a good uh, a business to be in uh, and ripe for exploitation. You can go in and see if you can uh, undercut and get the margins down. OK, so there you go. There's our income statement. Let's have a look at their balance sheet. Uh, if I can find their balance sheet um, uh, again the wrong way. Sorry. Yeah, no, we're on different pages here. Sorry. So I've got to scroll right onto balance. sheet. Here we go. Here's the balance sheet. Right. So we are looking again at the highlighted column, non-current assets. Um, so these guys have got uh, uh, about a billion of non-current assets. And uh, we're going to read these two numbers together. So they've got the property, plant and equipment and the lease right of use assets, which is more property, plant and equipment. It's just stuff they don't own. They've got it on a lease. So you know, think about that photocopier in the corner. You know, maybe your company owns it. Maybe they've got it on a higher purchase, for example. So we're going to read those two numbers together. And that's basically it. So and that's not big for a company with a two billion um, uh, 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 a two billion um, uh, turnover. So you know, if you think about it, you know, they may own their warehouses, but probably they're going to lease uh, or rent a lot of their warehouses. They may own their forklift trucks, but maybe they lease them as uh, as well. So you know, they don't need a lot of stuff. Um, they do have quite a lot of inventory. Um, as you'd expect, they have people who owe them money because um, they sold them, and they've also got about half a billion of cash sitting in the bank and so they've got another uh, billion of um, current assets things which are cash or going to become cash soon and if you add those two together you end up with two billion in total assets so there's the assets of the business current liabilities things they have to pay soon is basically their suppliers um, so the suppliers that they bought and you'll notice that if you compare the current assets to the current liabilities, liquidity just doesn't look a problem. In fact, they could got enough cash to pay their suppliers immediately. So these guys, liquidity, really not an issue. Very, very comfortable doing business with them. Their liabilities are really around the leases. OK, so you can see that these two numbers, these are the lease liabilities, and that will drive the interest that we were seeing um, in the income statement. Um, there's no debt sitting here. Um, so there's no kind of you know interest on debt. It's interest on lease liabilities. And that's absolutely fine. Um, so really, you know, these guys, you know, I mean, the balance sheet is looking pretty strong. Total liabilities are a billion 
on total assets of um, uh, 2 billion, leaving them with a billion in net assets. So just under a billion in net assets. Um, and that billion in net assets is a little bit of investment, but mainly driven through uh, retained earnings. So that profit being reinvested back into the business um, uh, in order to um, fund uh, future growth in the business. So you know, I'm looking at this balance sheet and I'm thinking it, it couldn't really be a stronger balance sheet. You know, this is a this is a really solid company, you know, very, very strong, you know, almost bulletproof um, balance sheet as far as I can see. This ESOP, I just mentioned that that's the um, employee share options. I don't know what the P stands for, you know, profit share or something like that reserve. It's basically saying that the employees are also getting a benefit um, from share prices. So, you know, there's a big incentivization probably going on. If you work at Howden's, you know, you'll be part Part of that share option scheme the opportunity to buy shares in your business so looking pretty good cash flow here is our cash flow they um uh, just uh, uh, so here's the sort of the core cash flow so very cash generative profit add back the depreciation these two numbers here and we get basically the cash flow in the business there's a little bit of a movement in working capital so we like to just keep an eye on this especially of companies like this so um for example you know they they're they've got more inventory than they had they're growing they've got more inventory but they got cash tied up in that inventory they're growing they've got more people who owe them money and that means that they've got less cash um uh, and they have got more in their suppliers um and those sort of numbers then sort of slightly net out we just might want to keep an eye on that because you know if this company if, if this number is growing significantly often it's an indication of a company is struggling to pay its suppliers um uh, and therefore uh you know obviously if a company stops paying its suppliers its suppliers stop supplying uh, and then it becomes game over effectively so um I, it's not a problem for these guys i think that's very much driven by their you know the the, the growth of the business um and, and as we said they've got enough cash to pay their suppliers like that so really you know liquidity is not an issue for these guys but um if you are looking at other companies just keep an eye on that so in terms of the kind of the core cash flow cash flow from operations generating cash very very good little bit of investment going on that's fine not a not not a huge amount they don't really need to do a lot of investment because they're not a capital intensive business um so you know if you do do a sort of return on capital employed um you'll be ending up with you know uh, you know 33% for example you go wow 33% but these guys are not capital intensive so it's not really a relevant um, measure um, uh, and we can see that they are paying out uh, some of those um, shares, uh, dividend, uh, 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 some of that profit is being paid um, to shareholders, and also they are buying back their own shares. Um, so those two numbers there uh, are kind of what they're doing with the um, uh, with the um, uh, the investment. Uh, and so, you know, in effect, they're taking that cash and they're returning it back to the um, uh, shareholders, but they're still sitting on them. They they they, they got positive cash during the year, uh, and that and they're building up their cash balance. Um, th there was a comment about, you know, you know, it, it, are they going to face some problems? Here's here's the um uh, the movement in equity. Um, uh, so just looking at this column here, this is the retained profit column. Um, we can see there's the retained earnings at the beginning of the year. Um, we've got the profit for the period. That's the profit. That's the unearned profit. Um, uh, don't worry too much about that. But we can see very clearly share buybacks, and there's the um, uh, the dividends which we saw in the cash flow, um, uh, and that's you know, two ways of of returning money to the shareholders. Um, comment was you know whether these guys are going to survive you know if we do go into recession maybe i kind of you know I, you know cost of living crisis you know my mortgage payments have gone up my energy bills have, have gone up the last thing i'm going to be doing is you know buying a new kitchen um you know so these guys may see a downturn um but i think they are you know they are very you know they're a very strong business um and i think that they are you know they look pretty bulletproof to be able to weather any storm i would be very surprised i mean it would have to be a massively deep dark recession to knock these guys off their perch so they may see you know the cash flow come down they may see the profits come down they may even make a loss um but i think these guys are here for the long term uh, it looks a, a pretty strong um a set of uh, is a, a pretty strong business to me um what we might like to look at uh, when we're looking at the balance sheet just go back to our balance sheet here is um so when we look at the um the the uh the the uh the 
uh, working capital, we're kind of looking at, um, you know, comparing these, uh, uh, you know, and how long does it take them to to move their inventory? It takes them 126 days to shift inventory, which you know is quite a long time, but you know that's probably because there, you know, there's a lot of shipping involved in that. Um, takes them another 26 days to get the money in from their customers. It takes them 73 days to pay their suppliers. So these guys, you know, they negotiate hard. Again, get your negotiation boots on if you are um, uh, uh, dealing with them. 73 days to pay the su suppliers, which basically means they're working capital requirement is about 80 days okay so these guys from cash in to cash out uh, need 80 days um, but they've got easily enough working capital so they are well capitalized in terms of their working capital to be able to kind of you know to survive that that 80 days and it's down from about 87 days in the previous year so um you know these guys are you know they're ticking a lot of boxes uh, i haven't really found anything that is uh, looks um, weak um, uh, on their balance sheet uh, or in their uh, financial statements let's go back and look at their share price um so here is their share price and um uh You'll notice the um the the PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio, uh, up in the top right hand corner, um is about eleven times earnings. Okay, so that's you know you know that that's cheap. You know that really is cheap. You know if you turn that upside down, that's a yield of about ten percent. Okay, so that you know if you buy this company, you're getting a you're you're buying something which is giving you a yield of ten percent. Okay, the market capitalization three point four billion. Um the the balance sheet is only about a billion so there is goodwill in there but um you know you're really if you're buying this company you're buying the um you're buying the future income this dividend yield here i this, this looks a really low number i'm not so I'm, I'm not sure where that number comes from they paid out 134 million in dividends last year and if you include the share buybacks which was another i think it was 50 million from memory that's a total of 184 million 184 million on 3.4 billion is a five percent yield now five percent yield is pretty low um in terms of dividend but a lot of that is being reinvested back into the business and they are growing just to remind you their top line grew by 35 percent which is a massive growth so their share their their um uh, their their earnings per share has grown from 25 24.9p to 53 which is a massive growth which means that if you look at their price to earnings growth ratio and there's a number of ways you can look at it in terms of you know including dividend yields and share buyback yields it's you know it's really really cheap so i don't think they're going to keep up that 35 percent growth rate so I'd, you know, so, so I wouldn't kind of read too much into those numbers. But, you know, even if they come off the boil a little bit in terms of their profit and loss account um, uh, and their growth rates, and even if they see a downturn, you know, these guys are still looking relatively cheap. So, you know, I, I think I'm kind of, you know, I'm going to go back to our, our um, uh, the Dread Pirate the dread pirate Buffett um, uh, and and uh, uh, and so on and just say, look, you know, you, you're right. I think this looks really, really cheap. Um, yes, I think it is going to hit headwinds. Um, but, you know, these guys, these guys are, are going to be there around for the long term. So I'm pretty happy with them. Um, just a final uh, thought, Moeed, um, uh, just to if we have a look at page uh, 65 um, uh, of these accounts, uh, we can see um, our CEO and see how much the CEO is being paid. Um, uh, so here is the, um, the kind of the total remuneration. Uh, and you'll notice that Andrew Livingston, who runs the show, is basically paid about four million quid. Um, is he worth it? Well, um, I don't know how complicated the business is, but certainly uh, I think he's running a pretty tight ship. Um, I think that Paul Hayes, who's the CFO, the chief financial officer, uh, probably needs a bit of a pay rise because he's, you know, I mean, they really are. You know, this is this is a good set of accounts. Um, uh, if you're working uh, for these guys and, and you're interested in, in where you kind of sit within that um, compared with that four million, you can have a find it out on page 81. Uh, so if we look on page 81 and I just need to find the number. Here we go. Staff costs. So it gives us the kind of the total number of staff. There is the total number of staff. It's just under 11, 11 uh, thousand people working for the organization who are paid collectively 553 million pounds, which means that the average salary at Howden's is 51 thousand pounds now you can uh, quickly work out are you above or below average as an employee uh, and you can also work out that um uh mr livingston is paid 77 times the average salary is he worth 77 times that well i'll leave uh, that for the pundits to work out
So there you go, Moeed. That is my analysis of um, Howden's. I hope you found that um, uh, useful uh, and interesting. Um, I think it's a, you know, this looks a great company uh, and certainly um, one which uh, I think would be, you know, worthwhile investment. Um, you know, you may not see immediate returns, uh, but, you know, I think this is, this is a really good example of the fact that the UK generally speaking is cheap right now there's lots of lots of stuff out there which is just cheap it's cheap for a reason but you know it's not going to be cheap forever so i i think this could be definitely you know part of a you know you know nicely well diversified portfolio yeah thank you for that and interestingly the ceo for howden's is paid uh his payments actually very his salary is very similar to the CEO of BT British Telecom, which is a much larger, more complex business. So interesting to see that he's being paid on a similar basis. So we'd love to hear everyone else's thoughts. I did promise to share with you how you can uh, submit a request for a company you're interested in, and here's how you do it. You very it's very simple. All you do is in any one of our videos, uh, leave a note in the comment section. Tell us the name of the company you're interested in and a bit of information about why you're interested in that company so that we can answer questions that are relevant for your interest. So if you just do that, that that will put a, you'll get yourself on the list there and we will publish your uh, analysis as fast as possible. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification button so you get notification of a, co of a company we analyze, especially one that you've requested. And if you know people who are interested in companies like Howden, for example, whether they're thinking about selling to the business like this or investing in them or even joining them in their career, uh, do share this video with them because this analysis will really, really help improve their understanding of the business. Until the next video, thank you, Ted. Thank you, everyone. We will see you on the next, on the next video. Good to see you, Moe. Catch you later. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful and informative. Now, if you want to know more about uh, what I do, then you can visit Talk Financials and find out about the training workshops uh, and the clients uh, that I work with. And the QR code uh, is on your screen right now. If you are interested in being able to do this yourself, to do some uh, financial analysis, there's a couple of resources. There is an online workshop. Uh, it's available on my website, or you can click on the QR code and it'll stay, take you straight through uh, to this online workshop uh, where you can learn to read and understand and interpret financial information yourself. Alternatively, there is a book available at all good bookstops, particularly a very big online one, and the QR code once again will take you through to the opportunity to buy the book, uh, and there is also a Kindle edition. Um, Otherwise, that's everything from me. Please, please, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe uh, to the channel. More subscribers uh, uh, makes it uh, uh, means that you're going to get um, notification um, about uh, new videos coming up uh, and also the opportunity to you know, ask questions and do recommend any videos uh, or sorry, any companies that you'd like me uh, to analyze for you. Um, I think we've got a couple of uh, suggested next videos coming up. Uh, so please do uh, take the opportunity, have a look at the other videos uh, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you on the next video.